rockets who were blasted out through the airwaves. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Quickly, an official military report was released, squashing UFO rumors, stating the object was a simple weather balloon. But confessions of men who claimed to be there, such as retired Sergeant Frank Kaufman, tell a very different story. He learned right then and there it wasn't a plane, it wasn't a missile. The size of the craft, I would say, possibly maybe around 20, 25 feet in length, and, and it was open and kind of uh, halfway, and one, one body was half out of the craft. And when we got in close, we noticed that there were uh, three others inside the craft. Then we radioed in back to the base to have a truck, a flatbed, and a crane, and everything else just come out to the site. And, and we prepared everything to clear everything off. Some alleged civilian witnesses have also come forward with stories of a government cover-up. Frankie Rowe, a child at the time, recounts a visit from the local airfield officers. And he said, I want you to know you were never there. And I didn't understand what he meant. Because I said, yes, I was. And he said, no, you weren't. I said, yes, I was. And he said, can't you get this through your head? You never saw anything. You were not there. You don't know anything. And he said, you know, this is a big desert out here. We can just take you out in the middle of this desert and no one will ever find your bodies. He said, you'll be nothing but bones and nobody will ever know what happened to you. And I told him I would not talk about it. This 1950 document from the FBI vault could prove that we not only recovered flying saucers in the New Mexico desert, but that we found three small bodies inside the craft dressed in metallic cloth. Did the military know that the flying disc reportedly found was a craft from another world? And if so, what was done with the recovered craft? This is Hangar 84. And uh, this is where the uh, craft and the bodies were actually brought into this hangar. But uh, there was a lot of activity in this area here. And inside the hangar, right above on top, there was this large spotlight which was shining down on the craft. And also, the bodies were laid out. There were five of them. And there was a cordon of, of uh, military police around the area to keep people getting too close. So what happened after the crash at Rockstar? Well, on the one hand, it was totally covered up, and it would remain covered up for at least the next 31 years, but other things happened. In the decades that follow, U.S. military technology begins to advance. Faster rockets, more sophisticated machinery, in less than a decade, America has a man in space. Just 20 years after Roswell, a man walks on the moon. Many see these advances as evidence of America's brush with UFO technology. In the years after Roswell, UFO sightings increased tenfold. But the most frightening evidence points to the unthinkable a hostile alien life force that crashed and is battling our military right here on planet Earth. Coming up next, the bloodiest alien-human firefight in recorded history told by the one man who survived. ...of Los Angeles, the alien UFO crash at Roswell. On their own, both contain startling evidence of alien invaders in America, but it wasn't until recently that we discovered just how seriously the military viewed this alien threat. Unsealed case file, Air Force Instruction 10206. In 2011, undeniable proof of the military's concern regarding UFOs is uncovered in U.S. Air Force files. The evidence is an operation manual known as 10206. 
Contained in its pages are instructions for military personnel on reporting UFOs. This was not a manual from the 1960s or 1970s. We now have a manual, undeniable proof, that the military was still actively investigating these UFO records, these UFO reports, and these UFO sightings. That's very, very significant because that is 100% contradictory to what the military wants you to believe. AF-10206 could be a smoking gun that exposes an alien threat that the U.S. government is, and maybe has been aware of, for over 60 years. Unsealed case file. The Presidential Alien Pact. Palm Springs, California. In 1954, U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower is on vacation when suddenly, on the night of February 20th, he disappears for what he later reports was an unplanned dental appointment. A story several theorists dispute. Witnesses who came forward in later decades support the story, claiming to have seen Eisenhower report to nearby Edwards Air Force Base, all in an attempt to allegedly meet face-to-face -face with leaders of an advanced alien race. Purported witnesses to this event claim that Eisenhower was actually asked there by the extraterrestrials in order to make some sort of deal. The 1954 treaty is said to have included the following deal. Mankind gets the use of alien technology. Aliens get human test subjects for experiment. Many of them, women and children. It is a tale corroborated by multiple insiders, including former government geologist Phil Schneider. Eisenhower signed a pact with the known alien species of the time, there were three at the time, and said that we're going to deal in high technology, but you can take a few head of cattle and a few human beings and you can experiment on them. It's unthinkable. It's stuff straight out of the Nazi death camps. According to Schneider, experiments on humans are taking place in a highly classified secret base two miles underneath the desert in Dulce, New Mexico. I was involved in building a base inside of Dulce, New Mexico, which is Los Alamos Laboratory. I'm on the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa, uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles, all of that underground. Reports state that the base is seven levels deep. Each one requires a higher security clearance than the last. But the deepest levels are allegedly used only by alien researchers for their experiments on human beings. The seventh level is where only the aliens go. And it is literally a chamber of cars. Human body parts are floating in these blue liquid vats. Human beings are being used to own human body parts being used. We combine with um, alien body parts, no human beings allowed. The tales are so terrifying that it has become known as Nightmare Hall, a place where no man, woman, or child is safe. Right now, there's 100,000 children totally unaccountable through FBI archives, cannot be traced anywhere. They haven't been murdered. Nobody's ever seen them. I think they're hauled underneath in some of these bases, and they are summarily done away with, and they are literally eaten. According to Schneider, 11 alien races occupied Dulce, performing horrific experiments on their human test subjects. In August of 1979, Schneider claims special forces, including the Army's Green Berets, entered the underground base. It was here that Schneider, one of the first responders, claims to have been gravely injured. Confronted with hostile seven-foot-tall aliens, Schneider says he drew his sidearm and fired on the creatures, killing two. The next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish and burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. And it was some form of electrical force because of the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt. Some dismiss these claims as fantasy. But in recent months, the news media has reported on a battle between armed forces around the world and an unnamed alien threat. Coming up next, the incredible story ripped from the headlines that could reveal a global conspiracy and the shocking truth of a secret 
alien war. The U.S. government denies any existence of an extraterrestrial threat to our planet. But the news media tells a different story. Just off the coast of Northern California, on September 17, 2012, the online newspaper, Veterans Today, reports that naval warships from the U.S. and China have joined forces over the Pacific Ocean to fight a highly unfriendly extraterrestrial threat. If true, the global conspiracy to conceal an ongoing alien war may be over. Decades of hiding the extraterrestrial threat could be crumbling. This may just be the first alarm that a war of the worlds has begun. And we are about to join the fight.